Hello friends, welcome back to another video on the difficult path. <clears throat> and to this video series, this is my story. In today's video, I wanted to talk about God ordained suffering. I'd be hard pressed to argue against the fact that God has ordained suffering for believers. Um in that he has a purpose and a reason for them. Like, it's not just empty suffering like those who aren't born again. Like, their suffering is unto suffering, which will end in suffering, <clears throat> right? But for those who are born again, there's a purpose. There's a reason for suffering. And I think Scripture lays a pretty good foundation for that argument. When I moved here to Colorado Springs, I thought I was going to start over in life. <clears throat> I had big plans. I was going to make it big. I was going to make it big. Going to make it big. No, I'm kidding. I just wanted to start over in life, right? Little did I know, however. Little did I know that, that God had a plan that was different from mine. Little did I know that the next two years would radically change my life. <laughs> Little did I know God was aligning me with him through a more scriptural understanding of his will in my life. Little did I know that though I'd planned to start my life over again, God was planning on shutting it down. Like God's plan was to shut down my life, not to start it over Little did I know that instead of moving forward in life, it was God's design and will for me to move backwards. Like I didn't gain any ground over the last two years of my life. I've lost ground. I've lost major ground. <clears throat> um, arguably. Little did I know that it was time for the fiery trials of tribulation. Dun, dun, dun. God's desire was to teach me a powerful lesson. And I think that for sure all of his lessons are powerful, but this one was pretty powerful. He finally wanted me to be able to acknowledge his will in my life so that I could partner with him right, in what he was doing in my life. I've been dealing with a lot of allergy stuff and everything else. Forgive me for my obnoxious sounds. <clears throat> right, so God wanted to teach me a powerful lesson, right? Oh, I got it. Dang it. Um, let's see. He wanted me to be able to acknowledge his will in my life so I could partner with him. Okay, so God's teaching me a lesson, and that lesson is to partner with him concerning what he's doing in my life, like his will, right? He's accomplishing his will in my life. What he wants me to do is embrace it, right? He wants me to align with it. Um. Because for the purpose of his name be like for the purpose of him being glorified in my life, right? Because it's his design and desire to be glorified through my life. He can't be glorified through my life unless he's first glorified in my life, right? <clears throat> That meant that I had to start submitting to his will. But for me to submit to his will, I had to first receive a, spirit, a spiritual, spiritual, scriptural understanding of his will in my life. Like, I know God's sovereignty. Like, I understand the sovereignty of God. It's, 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 it's sovereign, right? There's different 
definitions and views of God's sovereignty, but God is absolutely sovereign, in my view. That's what I believe Scripture declares and states, that, that God is a sovereign, in-control God. And, <clears throat> yeah, so, but I had to learn, I had to learn to, I guess, see his will, like, to, to, to be able to acknowledge, like, what was happening in my life was his will. I didn't see my life being shut down and losing two years of it, like, literally losing, wasting two years of my life you know, in, in the physical realm of life, um, as God's will, I just, I, I could, I couldn't, I couldn't see that. Like even, even here, a lot of people believe that it's not God's will. Those who, who claim to be Christian here believe that it's not God's will for people to be homeless. Like it's not God's will for them to be here. And I, I'm like, really? So these guys have somehow, stepped outside of the sovereignty of God, right? Like they're more sovereign than God. They're they're enacting their sovereignty over over God's sovereignty or God's will, right? If it's not God's will for them to be here and they're here. So, anyway. <clears throat> um God's sovereignty. Yeah, I had to I had to understand what that looked like as far as his will in my life. Like I've, I've known scripturally, right? I, I agree with scripture that it teaches that we're supposed to experience suffering, trials, tribulation, persecution. I agree with that. I see that. And I have experienced some of that. Um, I think all of it, maybe not so much tribulation. I would say the last two years of my life has been trivial, trivial, uh, not trivial, <laughs> trivial, trivial, <coughs> tribulation fied, tribulational fied, <coughs> tribulational. Yeah, to me, the last two years definitely have been a tribulation. But really, like, I don't know. I think like Job would be tribulation. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, tribulation. Like that's a, that's a persecution. Like that's it's a severe persecution. That's like an intense persecution. Um but I've I've experienced persecution. Um I would consider intense tribulation. I don't know for sure suffering and pain in the last 2 years of my life has been the most tribulated um that I've experienced. And so, yeah, major difficulties. But I always looked at what I faced as obstacles, something to overcome, um, challenges to face, right? Like, unfortunately, again, there are Christian circles who teach that it's not God's will for you to suffer, right? Like, it's not God's will for them to be homeless. It's, it's not God's will for you to suffer, right? Um, in fact, they teach that if you are suffering, it's because of the devil, right? <laughs> so, I didn't understand the trial. So, because, because I, 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 I didn't understand the trial back in the day, before my theology was changed, before non-reformed, now reformed. <clears throat> before, in non-reformed, I looked at my trials, um, rather, when I experienced the trials, I didn't receive God's intended purpose for them. I learned from them, right? They were lessons that, I, you know, they were experiences, right? Um, So, of course, you grow and you learn from them. It's experience, right? You're supposed to. That's, that's supposed to be how it is. Anyway, <clears throat> but I didn't receive God's, like, the full force of the intention, right? Because 
um, because of my bad theology, right? And so I was busy fighting off the devil instead of embracing the will of God for me at that moment, you know, whatever that looked like in that time. Um, <clears throat> instead of looking, instead of looking to God for his direction, like I was, I was busy finding demons and breaking the enemy's attack on my life, right? And I'm like, come on, you demons. I ain't allowing for this. <clears throat> um, yeah, and so I missed a lot of God's intentional, like his, his, the design and the purpose for, for suffering because I couldn't see it as his will in my life. I couldn't embrace it. Like I couldn't, I couldn't come into agreement with what God was doing in my life. Um, and so I lost, right? <clears throat> There are many who suffer in severe ways in this life and still receive the justice of God. It's kind of like I was touching on earlier. Like those who are not born again, they suffer unto suffer. Uh, they're suffering unto suffering that will end in suffering, right? And so there's no benefit from their suffering. <clears throat> um, but with with those who are born again, there's a purpose. There's a reason. There's a benefit from the suffering, right, that, that we receive. And uh, I've, always, I've always thought about the Israelites who were enslaved by the Egyptians. You know, they suffered a lot <clears throat> under the rule of Pharaoh, only to perish on the way to the promised land because they did not believe in God, right? It, they, they all were delivered by by God from their bondage, right? They were all set free. God set them all free, right? They all went through the Red Sea and they all ate the bread from heaven, but only those who were chosen by God entered into the promised land. The rest of them, the whole that whole generation, um, God did not allow into the promised land. Outside of the promised land, they all died, right? They, they, God wasn't going to allow them into the promised land. And so, even though they experienced, man, they experienced God, God's glory, His presence. I mean, you know, signs and wonders. And they still fell in the desert, right? They still fell in the desert. The Holocaust would be another time of great suffering for the Jewish people. Many Jews experienced unthinkable suffering um, and torture, like great suffering and great torture. Like they were tortured, right? Um, what did he used to perform tests on them, right? They were like medical experiences. And let's just see if this works. We'll cut them up this way, sew them together this way, and if they die, they die. Um, can't you just can't imagine? But they perished in their unbelief, right? Those those who were not born again, their suffering was un, unto suffering, unto greater suffering. There was no purpose for it. Um, but for those um, who were born again. Right, God was glorified in them and through them. It's, it's His whole purpose. But today, in the same way, people identify as Christians and they they experience suffering, right? And they they experience suffering and kind of like the blessings of God. I think they're like, yeah, because of this, I'm born again, right? God is for me because of this. Um, <clears throat> And so they're they're placing their hope in a in the wrong place, right? It's it's a false hope, it's a false peace and safety. But they are suffering or currently suffering and will face the justice of God on the day of judgment because they place their hope in a false gospel, right? They many, many believe, many will on that day declare, Lord, Lord, um, they were never born again. They they did not believe in Jesus Christ. They followed the wrong Jesus. 
Right? They followed the Jesus of the masses. The non-reformed view of Jesus is an idolatrous view of, of God in Christ. It's, it's not a biblical view at all. <clears throat> they deny so much of Scripture um, to shape and form a God that pleases them. Just like the, Isra Israel, um, the Hebrews did at the bottom of the mountain when Moses went up to get the commands of God. Like he met with God, he was meeting with God to get the commands of God to bring back to the people, right? They're like, nah, we want a God that appeases us, one that, that pleases us, one that, that, that we, we develop, we like, we want to support and embrace and follow. So they made a golden calf, right? <coughs> God wanted to make some changes in my theology. He wanted to renew my mind. Right? He wanted to bring me into alignment with Scripture concerning this issue of suffering, concerning the issue of His will being in opposition to mine, right? Being completely not what I would think His will to be. God wanted to renew my mind. He wanted to bring me to a place of surrender. Right? He wanted me to, to, to come to a place that I could submit to his will and embrace it. You know, so I, I, if, if I can see it and acknowledge it, right, then I can submit to it and embrace it. And then, then partner with and so on and so forth. Right? And God's glorified in my life and through my life. <clears throat> Right, and God's will is being done. Through all of the mess over the last couple of years, God has taught me several valuable lessons. <clears throat> um, lessons, of course, that I've never learned before. Lessons that were needed, like they're they were they were important lessons, right? These lessons, I believe, are pivotal for those who are born again. Like it's a it's it's a necessity that that this is becomes an essential part of your life. You know, to to be able to see and acknowledge God's will in your life and embrace it, whatever it looks like, whatever it looks like, it's the will of God. Is is the devil moving? Probably, but it's still the will of God, right? Because God has allowed it. He is he has ordained it. Um, for his purposes, for his reason. There's a reason for it, right? You can't forget the reason. There's <laughs> God has a purpose for it, man. And in that we rejoice, right? In that we celebrate, in that we glorify God. Why? Because man, we don't understand his ways. We don't, we don't know. We don't understand what he's doing most of the time until he's already done it. And then it's like, man, is that what you were doing? Gosh. That's what you wanted. That's what you were showing me. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> God was making changes in my lives. He wanted to bring me to a place of surrender. And the, <clears throat> the lessons, right? So the lessons are, are they're, the lessons of God are, man, they're, uh, they're glorious. They're important. Okay. I went off into another place there. So, back on spot. These lessons are pivotal. I believe they're pivotal. You have to you have to understand. You have to acknowledge. You have to embrace. You have to partner with God, man. It's easy to say, yes, God, have your way in my life. And then God comes and has his way. And you're like, wait a minute, you know, uh, 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 this is not, no, uh, no way. <coughs> so pivotal to imagine how different my life would have been if I could have learned these lessons earlier, right? I've spent a lot of time contemplating that and how much, how much I've just squandered of my life Man, if I could have been at this point 20 years ago, how much I could have done for God. But that's not the point either, right? Um, there's a time and place for everything, right? Like God's timing is, is, is perfect. And so instead of stressing over what could have been, right? 
I trust in God's plan. Wasn't God's plan back then? Why? I don't. I don't know. Would it have been nice? And I would have loved it. You know, nothing greater in the world. But it didn't happen. And so here it is now, and I'm embracing it. I'm embracing it, and I'm I'm glorifying God in the midst of it, and I'm glorifying like I, I'm. I still messed that up. Um. <clears throat> glorifying God in the midst of it and finding ways to glorify God, you know, through it, like through my weakness, through my situation, um, <clears throat> trying to find those ways, like my videos, you know, <sighs> never thought I would be doing videos and here I am trying to glorify God on my videos. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. <clears throat> so I trust God's plan, right? I mean, I was lost in a bad theology through a universal, tolerant, inclusive view of God for years. For years. From the age of 18 to about the age of... I don't know how old I was. How old was I? Maybe 35? Maybe 35, I think, is when God started working... And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. I mean, things really didn't start changing until, yeah, maybe in my 40s, you know, like 10 years ago. <laughs> my early 40s. And then even then it was still difficult, the, 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 the transition from the theologies because I was in a non-reformed community. And it was so difficult. Oh, it was so difficult. But anyway, um, for years, right? I think, so I have around 2009-ish is when God started to address the bad theology. And like I said, it took another five years for me just to accept this view of God that just I was totally against. But was in scripture. It's clear. It was like right there in the word of God, like black and white, right? Big bold print all throughout scripture. <clears throat> um, and I couldn't deny it. I didn't like it, but I couldn't deny it because it was in God's word. And and so I, I pressed forward. Um, thankfully, God worked in me and, and established that work and brought me to a place of surrender, even though it's been difficult. And I've questioned, you know, <laughs> I can't tell you how much I've questioned my position, um, which I think is good. Uh, even Paul mentions, you know, having a fear of God when preaching the gospel, you know, knowing that there's an accountability there for speaking the truth, speaking right knowledge about God. I mean, even the, I think the prophets do much about, <clears throat> speak much about and do much about addressing that issue, right? Speaking right knowledge of God. Anyway, um, yeah, so for for many years, bad theology, but thankfully, God brought me through, right? <clears throat> it, it's a, it was a battle, but Scripture won, right? Scripture won, thank God. Thank God, Scripture won. That, per that period was very difficult. Um, definitely well worth the reward of faithfulness to God and His Word, though. Like, I'm reaping a benefit of, of that reality. I still have issues because of, of my past, but I'm still pressing on knowing that, man, I, it's not... I'm not certain... Like, God doesn't exist to do what I think or feel is right. Like... It's not whether or not I think or feel it's good or fair. Like, it's what God has declared, right? And, and God declares it, and it's my job to accept it, right? Like, he says, believe in my son, right? So there's an accepting, 
an accepting part, but of course that's not possible apart from the Spirit of God. But anyway, so great reward to um, the great reward for faithfulness to God and His Word, holding to His Word, not what I think His Word says, not what I desire His Word to say, but what it actually says. Um, the hardest lesson I think I learned was that God's will can be painful, right? It can be debilitating and in complete oppositions with my desires in life, like complete opposite, right? And there's scripture that really points to this fact, like through the, we can see it clearly in the gospels. There's a couple of points. Um, where God moves in opposition to good and noble desires. Like, I learned the need to partner with God by embracing the good and the bad situations that He ordains in my life. Like, He's ordained for my life. And it's like, okay, good or bad. Like, you know, Christ did the same thing. It's like, there's much suffering. There's much sacrifice. And, and Christ was like, man, with great joy. He embraced that, right? That was God's will. It wasn't a, pro a road of prosperity, life, what, life, health, wealth, and well-being. Like, um, what is the other one? Fame, fortune. Um, <coughs> is there a word I'm looking for? Prosperity and favor among men. I can't think. <coughs> And so, you know, we can look at Job's life or Jonah's rebellion. Like it was God's will for Job to suffer. And um, it was God's will for Job to suffer. And Jonah's rebellion to God's will is an example Right, so Jonah didn't want to do the will of God because he didn't think it was right. Like he didn't want the um, Ninevites to to receive mercy. He wanted them to receive justice. He felt that they deserved justice. <coughs> God's will was that they received mercy. <coughs> <coughs> and we move on to um, Peter. He gets rebuked. Right, um, trying to protect Jesus from harm and from um, um, being locked up. So Jesus trying to protect and keep Jesus, Peter trying to protect Jesus and keep Jesus safe was rebuked by Jesus. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Right. Why? Because it wasn't the will of God. Right. <clears throat> Good and noble desires. Um, it's just not the will of God. Another lesson I learned is that God's will is good because he's moving to glorify his name in my life so that he can be glorified through my life, right? His purpose is to be glorified in the world. If he's not glorified in your life, he can't be glorified through your life. <clears throat> <clears throat> Scripture teaches us that everything God does or allows under his sovereignty is for the good pleasure of his will. And everything God wills to happen, his purpose <coughs> wills to happen. His purpose is to glorify his name because it's the greatest good that mankind can experience. It's the greatest good we the greatest kindness God can do to us is glorify his name. I've learned to make it my goal to give glory for everything that happens and give God glory for everything that happens in my life, whether good or bad. Right? Paul encourages us. Telling us to count it all joy. And Peter encourages encourages us in the midst of it to rejoice. <clears throat> I think the most valuable lesson was to stop making excuses not to glorify God in my weakness. Like finding ways to avoid glorifying God um, because of my anxiety. Because of my fear of, of, of public speaking. Because of... <clears throat> fear of rejection, you know, all of that, 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 that stuff, um, because of my symptoms, you know, not wanting to talk because it causes pain. 
And so instead of making excuses, embracing that and then allowing God to be glorified through that, finding ways to glorify God through that, um, knowing God is in control at all times in every situation is what brings us peace and joy, right? Trusting in his plan in that painful, confusing, confusing, scary, or dreadful situation removes the opportunity for sin, right? It doesn't allow for the seeds of anxiety, fear, depression, or offense. Embracing whatever is, in, is causing your affliction as a work of God within you should bring comfort because you know that your suffering, right, is not in vain. There is, there is a purpose. There's a reason, right? Once again, um, there's a reward for your faithfulness. Scripture's clear. Jesus himself, in response to Peter's statement, um, assures him that those who lose for Christ will gain, right? They'll gain so much more. Without trials, there's no testing or refining of your faith. Without suffering, there's no purification. <clears throat> Without the persecution... There is no testing of the genuineness of your faith. <clears throat> they are all very much needed for the maturity of the Christian. They make us cling to Christ. They make us align with Scripture. And they make us glorify God. <clears throat> so in closing, there's a lot of people that disregard the, the stern warning of Scripture, right? Because they've convinced themselves that they are genuinely born again, like they... They believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that they are born again, uh, but their hope is placed in a meritorious work and not a work of grace um, alone, not a work that is by grace alone. Scripture does not allow for you to escape the echoing of the importance of examining yourself to see if you're in the faith, to test yourself to see if Christ is in you. Right There will be many who will stand before <clears throat> Christ on that day and declare, man, I know you, I know you and did all of these wonderful things. Look at all this wonderful stuff I did for you, Jesus. Only to hear those dreadful words, depart from me. I never knew you. <clears throat> you may claim to know Jesus Christ, but does Jesus Christ know you? Right? Is your hope based on grace alone? Or is it placed in a work you had to do, something you had to accomplish in order to receive eternal life? Listen, it's easy for people to put their hope in a false peace and safety based on a false gospel. <clears throat> Please examine yourself to see if you are in the faith, right? If your salvation is based on anything other than by grace alone. Please heed the warning from Scripture. Until next time, stay on the difficult path.